Hello, Johnny here, and in this video, I'm going to take you through some of the new features and changes found in Godot 3.2. This list is by no means complete, and there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. First off, artificial reality and virtual reality maintainers have made fantastic progress with Oculus Quest and ARKit support. Be sure to check out videos from maintainers Bastian and Holger. Links to these as well as more information can be found in the description below. Sticking with 3D, there's a new billboard property for Sprite 3D. This allows users to easily display 2D images that will always face the camera in a 3D space. You can find an example of this in the GD Quest Godot demos repo on GitHub. We're going to switch things up and instead create a 3D effect in 2D. This pseudo 3D effect is created by using multiple canvas layer nodes with varying scales that follow the viewport. It's a great effect and it's super easy to implement. The rich text label has received a fantastic upgrade in the form of rich text effects. These may create an interesting text boxes a breeze. Feel free to head over to my own channel to learn about this feature and how to create your own custom effects like the one you see here. On the audio side of things, Project Lead Juan has added a spectrum analyzer. Using this, we can have a visual representation of music and sounds. Along with this feature, it's possible to create sounds using audio generators in Engine, so have fun experimenting with that. Visual shaders have had a massive overhaul in terms of functionality and user experience. This makes creating more complex shaders much easier. We have a tutorial on the channel on how to get started with this feature. If you'd rather type out shaders yourself, you'll be glad to know that the shader language has received some improvements. It's now possible to use constants, arrays, and varyings, and more GLES3 features have been ported over to GLES2. Check out our 2D space shooter for examples on awesome shaders you can make. There have been lots of improvements to networking this release. Along with the fantastic WebRTC support added by Fabio, a network profiler has been added. This is great for debugging your multiplayer games as it displays useful information such as data uploaded and downloaded. Again, this is a huge feature, so be sure to check out the articles relating to this. The 3D asset pipeline has been drastically improved to support GLTF 2.0 and FBX formats. Improving these workflows is fantastic as they're popular in the industry. Here you can see our open source 3D mannequin, which was created in Blender. Please note that FBX from Maya or 3ds Max are not currently supported. GDScript has received some love as well. A new class ASTAR 2D has been added to make it easier to use ASTAR in 2D games. The performance of ASTAR has also been improved dramatically. After the import system rewrite, Atlas support was lost, but it has returned in 3.2. Using Atlases can increase performance for games with a large amount of frames of animation. Check the article in the description below for more information. The editor itself has received many quality of life improvements. Only working in 2D? Then disable all 3D nodes. In fact, many nodes and features you may not need in your game can be disabled or hidden by going into the Manage Editor Features menu. This improves workflow, and restricting features is also great for educational purposes. A code minimap has been added to the code editor. This gives an easy to read overview of the script you're working on, and even allows navigation by clicking and dragging. Another way to navigate larger scripts is to use bookmarks. Click a line and press Ctrl Alt B to set a bookmark. You can cycle through bookmarks by pressing Ctrl B. Staying with the code editor for just a moment, you may notice the added icons next to some functions. These appear when signals are connected to these functions via the signal connection window. You can click on the icons to see the signals that are connected to a particular function. Android developers can enjoy the new Android build and plugin system. This makes it easier to deploy to Android with more features added such as adaptive icons, support for pen input devices, and support for vibrations. The changes are extensive, so be sure to check the full articles in the description below. This release saw an improvement to the Godot documentation. There's more content and guides in more languages than ever before, thanks to the contributions from the community. Be sure to check these out and take a look at the improved theme and quality of life improvements. We also have guides and articles on the GDQuest website to help get you started as well. Godot 3.2.1 recently released as well, which included lots of fixes and improvements, and there's still lots of exciting things to come. For example, a huge change that's coming for Godot 4.0 is the Vulkan Renderer. This is a complete rewrite of the current renderer, and with this new modern rendering API comes performance boosts and more flexibility given to developers. This feature has been a long time coming, and there are multiple articles about this available on the Godot website. Finally, yet another feature to look forward to is multiple window support for games and even the editor itself, so it will be possible to take advantage of setups with multiple monitors. That's all for now. We hope you enjoy this release as much as we do. 
be sure to check the channel for tons of tutorials covering a whole range of topics. Until next time, see you later. Cheers.